ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. The Anything Wrestling Podcast is back at a time where it's a serious time in the world right now, and uh, I'm sure everybody by this point knows that the coronavirus has taken over, has created a big impact, and everybody has been encouraged to stay at home. Um, events, you know, uh, have been canceled or postponed. Very serious uh, subject matter. However, uh, myself, along with the rest of the crew, you know, the commission, and Dan the Man, um, we still felt uh, inspired and obligated to do an episode since WrestleMania 36 will be happening this Saturday and Sunday. And we all wanted to sort of bring a very unique style to the to the podcast because at this point in time as i said before everybody is encouraged to sort of quarantine themselves and to not really be around others and so myself the commission dan the man have all uh done separate recordings and we are now you know gluing them all together and every single one of us are going to give us our thoughts on each and every one of these matches. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is The Commish, your lovely and faithful advocate of the podcast for the Anything Wrestling Podcast, your legal counsel for AWP, and also all around uh, everything. <laughs> I'm glad to be here doing my part. Um, let me just remind everyone that you can catch WrestleMania, all of these matches, and all of your favorite WWE programming only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of just only... Of $9.99. $9.99? $9.99. So, first match here, we got, you know, Otis versus Dolph Ziggler. Um, you know, I, much like everybody else, was kind of catching on to the whole Mandy Rose and the Otis thing that was going on, you know, over social media. They kept on teasing it and teasing it, um, you know, and eventually it, it found its way onto, you know, SmackDown and everything seemed like it was going good. However, and then you kind of had, you know, Dolph Ziggler sort of come in and kind of become the third wheel. I understand that every storyline can't have, you know... Um, an immediate, you know, uh, happy-go-lucky, you know, uh, lead, you know, as in, you know, Otis gets the girl and that's it, story over, you know, but I just feel like these story storylines like this spend a whole lot more time focusing on, you know, other things as opposed to what really needs to be focused on. I hope that Otis uh, wins this one. I wouldn't mind if, you know, Mandy kind of betrays Dolph and, you know, allows for Otis to win. You know, Dan the man actually um, gave a good idea quite some time back where he said, you know, having Mandy Rose uh, sort of become like a manager to heavy machinery and kind of, you know, dictate how, you know, how Tucker and Otis would kind of function as a team. And then maybe you can have a point where Mandy Rose becomes the reason as to why Otis goes from, you know, a fun loving, you know, f baby face to a dominant, you know, giant heel. Um, but as as far as this match goes, um, again, the backstory of how we got here is not really all that interesting. Um, I know that some of that is due to circumstance because of what's been going on. But even before, you know, such thing happened, um, I just felt like the story, it had a good introduction, but then just kind of fell apart. So I'm hoping that Otis gets this one. Um, I hope that, you know, they can focus more on Mandy and Otis once WrestleMania is over. This match between Otis and Dolph, I'm just not that invested in. I, uh, I, I, I know the story a little bit. I've seen some of the clips. But honestly, it feels like it's been going on for a minute. Now we got this kind of weird shoehorning of Dolph Ziggler just causing problems for the sake of causing problems. Mandy, uh, I, I haven't gotten the impression that Mandy was all that bent out of shape out of the whole Otis, uh, breakup thing, but maybe, maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe the, this whole match is going to be the big bow on the present and we're going to see the two of them finally culminate their relationship. Uh, if I were to guess, I would say we'll see Otis walk away with the win. 
Dolph Ziggler versus Otis. Um, this storyline is, is appropriate in regards to SmackDown. It, it's this whole Otis, Mandy Rose, Dolph Ziggler uh, triangle, so to speak. And I <sighs> love stories to me sometimes in the WWE. They kind of get like meh to me. I'm not a big fan of them. Um, I think I read right that this is Dolph's first singles match ever in WrestleMania, in his WrestleMania history. If that's the case, you know, I think Ziggler gets over, you know, scoring one for the bad guy, whatever. But to me, this is just like a regular match. I, maybe there's interference by Otis's brother, Tucker. We'll see. But I still put Ziggler over Otis. Next match here, we have Elias versus King Corbin. Um, this was one of those matches, I believe, that was just kind of thrown in there. Um, and, you know, they did a segment here and there. Um, Elias, I think, is great. You know, I think that, you know, his little, you know, tidbits where he's, you know, strumming a guitar and it kind of, you know, saying a verse or two about his opponent or, you know, that episode of SmackDown or whatever it is. I think that it's really good. But, um, you know, and I think that King Corbin is doing everything that he needs to do to be like one of the most detestable guys in the business, which I actually don't mind because it's about time that someone gets that type of heat. I wouldn't mind Corbin um, going on to maybe hang to being like a U.S. champion or an intercontinental champion and just kind of like reigning supreme, um, you know, annoying more people and kind of getting underneath people's skin. Um, but I mean, this match, eh, you know, um, I wouldn't mind if Elias walks away with the win because Elias really hasn't had that, you know, notable victory, you know, ever really that I can really recall. Um you know, Corbin was doing the stuff with Roman and then it just, it, it just it kind of like, it was over and that's it. He really hasn't done anything of relevance. Um, I don't mind the whole King Corbin thing. I think that it's another step of him kind of evolving his character, you know, from going from Lone Wolf Baron Corbin to the Constable to the temporary Raw, you know, what was he, general manager or whatever he was, you know, from authority figure to King of the Ring. And, you know, I'm pretty sure that within the next year and a half, there will be another reincarnation of King Corbin. But this match, eh, again, you know, it's kind of just thrown in there. And once again, that that's that adds on to the flavor of, you know, two nights of WrestleMania. So you have to have matches. So um, nothing really notable about this one, but we'll just have to see where things go from there. Uh, this one is just another instance of a match where talented guys, probably going to be a fine, a fine mid-card match. But... I don't really care. Um, Elias has been great as a as a as a face. He's been uh, he's been a compelling character. I've always liked him. Baron Corbin can't say the same. So uh, with this one, odds are I would I would put my money on Baron Corbin walking away with the uh, the win. Uh, but I would I would be remiss. If I were to say we don't see Elias crack a guitar over Baron Corbin. Elias versus King Corbin. Another just singles match. Um, there, there's been some kind of buildup, you know, Elias. You know, we all walk with Elias lately. You know, he's the baby face versus, of course, uh, who's current. I, according to the shot. He has put himself out there to be a true heel of heels lately. Uh, and I'm talking about Corbin. Like, if you see by his demeanor, his promos, the way he carries himself, his matches, everything. It's the true signs of a heel. It's something that we've always, you know... It's what you should expect out of a heel. Uh, I still put Elias over just because Elias has been building on momentum, you know, with his face character right now. Um, I don't see this as such a long match. But then again, WrestleMania is split off into two uh, nights, maybe 
the event is split off, so there's enough time for the match. But I'm still saying Elias over Corbin. So, we have the next match, Alistair Black versus Bobby Lashley. Again, another match that was just thrown in there. Um, can't really say a whole lot about this. You know, Alistair Black has... Uh, like, his booking has been... Eh. Um, the whole thing about someone knocking on the door, or rather now he doesn't wait for anybody to knock on his door. He takes the fight to his opponents. Um, okay, sure, but I would really love to see, like, Alistair Black, like, really have a feud with someone. Um, you know, I brought up the idea that if Drew becomes champion, I wouldn't mind seeing a Drew McIntyre and Alistair Black feud. Just kind of like this babyface versus babyface heel to see who can really tune into their dark side and pull out a victory. Um, Bobby Lashley, you know, along with Lana, they were doing that romance angle with Rusev. I don't think anybody really cared about that. You know, that the, that angle was more laughable than anything. But now we have this match that just kind of, it's pasted on there. Again, when you have a two-night event, you kind of have to do that. Um, I think that if these guys really wanted to, they could have had, like, they can have a really good match. So I'm not going to spit all over the match and say that it's a waste of time. Who knows? We might see something impressive. But when there's no backstory, when there's no storyline, when there's no motive, you kind of fall into the whole trap of like, ah, whoever wins, wins, you know, that type of thing. So, Alistair Black, Bobby Lashley with Lana. I have no idea why this match is happening. Now, obviously you can't tell me if I'm missing something, but am I missing something? Uh, I don't Again, uh, if if this is another knock on my door thing, I I, I would rather that Alistair actually get a storyline instead of just, well, I want to fight you. Great, build a build a, a plot, build a feud, and let let's actually invest in this. Um, I would probably anticipate Alistair walking away with the win on this one, though. Uh, Alistair Black versus Bobby Lashley, Bobby. You know what I mean? Um, some weird stuff went on in regards to this because this match just came out of nowhere. Uh, before this all happened, Bobby Lashley was touring in, I believe it was South Africa for the WWE. And when, of course, the effects of the coronavirus, COVID-19 started happening, he had himself isolate for a while to find his way to come back home. Not that he was like, you know sick or anything but once he was brought back to the state side this all this started coming up like there was supposed to be a build up for this match there really hasn't been um so I don't know what to really make of this but all I can say is I see Alistair going over next match uh, Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins I personally think um, this match should have had everybody participate, um, everybody who's been a part of the storyline. But I think that if the wheels sort of started falling off, um, you think about it, Akam, I, th- I believe, was the one who got injured uh, very recently. Samoa Joe got uh, suspended for 30 or 60 days or whatever it was. So um, there was people who were involved in this feud, you know, uh, Viking Raiders, War Raiders, whatever their name is. Um, you know, they were in this feud and then all of a sudden now they're just kind of not. Um, I don't mind seeing Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. It's just that it doesn't, it's not new. We've seen this before in many, many different times. Um, I think that if, I think Kevin needs to get the win because Seth has been the, the, the dominant one, you know, picking up all the wins and kind of being the, the last guy standing, you know, when Raw goes off the air. So, um, the whole Monday Night Messiah thing, I'm, like, I'm not buying it, but I'm also not knocking it down. I'm okay with it. You know, I think that Seth, it, it was just a matter of time until he had to turn heel. But, um, you know, I don't know. It seems like the wheels kind of fell off of this feud. I think that this storyline, if it had started after WrestleMania and you went all the way to Survivor Series with it, that would have been an excellent five-on-five, you know, Survivor Series match where you had KO, 
uh, Viking Raiders, Samoa Joe um, versus uh, Seth, um, Murphy, and AOP. You know, and you had this four versus four traditional Survivor Series match. I think that would have been a very interesting way to kind of cap off the feud and end it. But um, in regards to this match, um, I think that KO needs to walk away with the win. Uh, Because, again, KO has kind of just been getting laid out time after time after time. um, And you kind of want to see, you know, the good guy get his redemption. Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins. Uh, we got a lot of backstory here. They go way back. Uh, they, they've had countless matches. Uh, I believe they were roped into to some authority angles together. Um, but yeah, Kevin KO has been uh, been a face here for a minute. I don't think that that's gonna that that's going to change at this show. Um, but I. I feel like he's just, he's a little flat as a face overall. Promo from this past week, pretty solid though. I, I dug it. But I think we're going to see Kevin Owens pick up the win. There's going to be plenty of interference uh, courtesy of, uh, I, I guess, Buddy and Razor. Because I think Akam is the one that's uh, injured right now with the tricep thing. But uh, we'll see... Those two interfere plenty, and then someone's probably going to make the save. I, I don't remember who else has been involved in this in this angle, though. So KO with the KO uh, or the stutter. But uh, that's my pick. Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. Um, in my opinion, from what I've seen from Seth Rollins, he, to me, is WrestleMania, Mr. WrestleMania lately. Not the second generation of Mr. WrestleMania, but Mr. WrestleMania 3.0. Now, what's my argument about this? Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan is the epitome of WrestleMania. He's been around. He's made appearances. Um, I would say Hulk Hogan is Mr. WrestleMania overall. Then, of course, you got the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, who's proven to always be Mr. WrestleMania. But I would say he's Wrestle, Mr. WrestleMania 2.0 for my generation as I grew up. I saw the boyhood dream come true. You know, I saw him put Stone Cold Steve Austin over at WrestleMania 14. Um, then his comeback, you know, that classic Michaels versus Jericho match at WrestleMania 19. Uh, the farewell match between uh, Sean and Ric Flair. Uh, both matches and Especially the second match being career versus streak. Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker. Shawn's always had moments at WrestleMania. Uh, And even before WrestleMania 12, um, Shawn Michaels' uh, classic ladder match with him and Scott Hall slash Razor Ramon uh, in WrestleMania 10. But that... Oh, no. It doesn't stare away from my point. My point is now you have Seth Rollins... um, I think he's undefeated at WrestleMania. I'm not sure. I may have to double check my stuff. But he had a classic match, you know, with Triple H. Um, no, he he is defeated. I'm sorry. Because WrestleMania 31, not only did he have a great opening match to start the event with Randy Orton at WrestleMania 31, but he performed what is now dubbed the heist of the century in regards to winning the WWE Championship later on that same night against Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Um, Again, I mentioned the match with him and uh, Triple H. Um, He's he's had... I think my other favorite match of his was against... I forgot who it was to win the Intercontinental Championship, but it was a triple threat match. Um... He's Mr. WrestleMania 3.0, in my opinion. Now, going into the match with him and Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is looking to make a WrestleMania moment against the uh, Monday Night Messiah. I can't wait to see these two square up in the squared circle. I think this is going to be a classic match. Um, Hopefully, you know, we get the best out of both gentlemen. I think, and I'm hoping this happens, I see Kevin Owens going over. Uh, Seth, just in the matter of regards that Kevin looks determined, he looks ready, 
And I think he's going to get that push back into, like, main event status. There's been speculation about Seth um, taking a break after WrestleMania. You know, maybe, you know, just get some time off, you know, relax, maybe plan out his personal life in regards to his wedding to Becky. Um, I don't know. That, that could be it. Uh, again, I hope this is a classic match as well. Just along along with the Edge and RKO match. Next match. Very, very interesting. John Cena versus The Fiend Bray Wyatt. Um, you know, this is one of those unique situations where we talk about things kind of coming full circle. You know, uh, they mentioned, they've been mentioning it this whole time. You know, six years ago, uh, these two squared off when John Cena and Bray Wyatt were at a different part of their careers. Um, since then, John Cena has been doing WWE very occasionally and Bray Wyatt has evolved into something very, very different. I personally feel like Bray needs to win this match because after losing to Goldberg, you know, if you're going to right or wrong or you're going to go somewhere with The Fiend... If he gets a victory over John Cena, I mean that's you know that that's that's pretty big. I I don't agree with him losing to Goldberg. I just feel like WWE was had booked them themselves into a corner where they knew for a fact that if Bray Wyatt went into WrestleMania as champion and was gonna face Roman and Roman would be the one to take the title away from the Fiend, that would have struck utter chaos. You know. Um, among the WWE universe. So, um, but, you know, we have a Firefly Funhouse match. I'm, I'm anticipating a friendlier version of a House of Horrors match that we saw a few years back. Um, you know, I think that whatever Bray does is entertaining. Um, sometimes, you know, things kind of get a little bit repetitive with the character, but, um, you know, if it's pre-taped and it's something that we see on the screen, I think that it's gonna it's 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 gonna be fun to watch. It's not gonna it's not gonna let us down. But I stand by what I said. I I you know Bray Wyatt needs to win this match, and if he doesn't, fair to say that the Fiend has already been buried and is no longer in the peripherals of Vince McMahon. John Cena versus the Fiend. This is uh. This is interesting because I don't I don't know how how exactly to feel about the plot that we've gone down. I don't really know what this match is gonna be because I know that the like I maybe this is like a like a Hardy compound Wyatt compound on site pre recorded match. Um, some of the Wyatt the Wyatt compound ones back in the day I thought were a little weak. So I'm hoping we get something better out of this one. Uh, I, I, the Fiend has to win this. Because if they put... I swear to God. If they put John Cena over the Fiend... The, I don't know what the hell WWE is thinking. That is the wrong decision. You just, had the, you just had the man lose to Goldberg. And from what I understand... It sounds like it was because they determined that... Well, the Fiend feel special even without the title, which is sort of in the same vein as The Undertaker, which we've always likened to the, the two of them. But the fact of the matter is you just had him lose prematurely. You can't have him lose to John Cena, so The Fiend has to walk out of WrestleMania with the win. Bray Wyatt, a.k.a. The Fiend, versus John Cena. Um... Now, with this, this apparently is something coming full circle finally. You know, Bray lost his Universal Championship at uh, Super Showdown, I believe was the show, against Bill Goldberg. And it's not what a lot of fans wanted, but I guess we got something to move on as far as how we're progressing with the power of The Fiend going along with uh, going up against a one John Cena. Now, my take on this is this is six years coming full circle finally between the two, you know, kind of putting an end to a rivalry. Um, I'm going to say 
the Fiend does go over. Fiend over John Cena. You know, I've been wanting to see this match. I feel like maybe this is John's way of paying back for years and years and years of him getting from the company now, him giving back to the company that he loves so much. I mean, he should have had his WrestleMania moment last year against Kurt Angle as the doctor of thugonomics, which everyone was happy to see again, but we didn't really get against Kurt Angle. Instead, we got Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin. Um, That's not what people wanted to see. They didn't want to see Corbin over Angle, but it is what it is. Next, we have The Undertaker versus AJ Styles in a Boneyard match. Um, I will say this. The promo that Undertaker cut this past week on Raw on the go-home show of Raw was one of the best. I saw the biker version of Undertaker in 2020. Like, that to me is is 2020 version of Biker Taker. Um, I love the promo. It was very direct. It was very, you know, in your face. It was very, okay, if you want to open this sucker up and break that fourth wall, let's, let's break the fourth wall. Um... Again, I will selfishly tell you that Undertaker has to win this match just because I feel like if Undertaker is competing at Mania, he needs to win. Everybody knows my sentiments about the streak being broken and Roman beating Undertaker a few years back at Mania. You know, Undertaker is a once in a lifetime, a, 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 a once ever, really. Um, and, you know, I think that at this point, you know, in AJ Styles' career, it's no longer about getting accolades or getting championships to AJ Styles it's hey I'm on my last run uh what can I do of relevance until that day when I have to walk away and I think facing Undertaker is definitely on the bucket list so um I'm hoping Taker wins um a boneyard match I don't know if that's a fancy term for buried alive I don't know if that's a new gimmick I don't know if that's just a regular match, but outside of the ring, you know, somewhere that looks like a graveyard. I don't know. I don't know what that infers, but um, I think that these two, whether it's straight up or whatever, can have a great match, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. We got The Undertaker versus AJ Styles in what is deemed a boneyard match. Now, I, <laughs> I, I, I think I've read or heard that the reason we're calling it a boneyard match instead of a buried alive match or something like that is actually because of the coronavirus stuff. Uh, with all the all the, the deaths coming out of the out of the this disease, um, WWE shied away from going with buried alive as the as the match type simply because they didn't want to bring in the whole concept of death. So it's just going to be, I guess, a fight in a graveyard or some or maybe they'll do the old buried alive set where you got the p- big ass pile of dirt and uh it's whoever whoever buries the other person um but i anticipate that the undertaker with his new well new recycled revitalized dead man gimmick uh i believe he's going to walk out with the win i do wish that there had been more development to this uh to this storyline and maybe maybe that suffered a little bit due to the the uh pre-recorded shows or the performance center shows instead of the live programming but uh yeah takers walking out of this one with the with the w the one match i'm looking forward to i know sean is looking forward to this match in particular is the boneyard match between AJ Styles and The Undertaker. Now, we've been getting speculation that, you know, this is a different Undertaker we're getting. We're not getting, you know, the Phenom, the Dead Man, um, you know, I'm here for the last judgment of you, you know. It, it, it seems like, yeah, we're still getting the mind games, we're still getting the classic promos but if you haven't caught his most recent promo i suggest you go find it on youtube or wherever you can find you know clips of the wwe the promo the undertaker just recently cut 
seemed like we were hearing from, you know, Dead Man Walking, Big Evil, um, Big Red, um, the American Badass Undertaker. You know, he's mentioned the countless victims, um, also slash greatest opponents he's had in WrestleMania, and that AJ Styles is now adding himself to the list. Um, I don't know what a boneyard match is. I don't think there's been much speculation in regards to what exactly a boneyard match means. Uh, I'm going to have to look up into it. Uh, maybe the shot can explain more about it um, after he hears this. But this is what I'm going to go on record of saying. I'm going to go that I would like the streak to continue at 25-2. and two. Currently, it's at 24-2. and two. I think AJ is going to be another, you know, tombstone in the graveyard of the Undertaker, especially since AJ is the one who came up with the match. Um, maybe it's something. This this is something different. You know what I mean? And the Undertaker's ready. Like he knows he has. He doesn't have many matches in front of him, but he's trying. He he still gives you his one hundred and ten percent. He's still a performer. He's still a classic, you know, wrestler. I mean, I can't wait for this match. I'm hoping it's 25-2, and two, so I'm putting Undertaker over uh, AJ Styles. Um, there's some speculated rumors that there's going to be some appearances from people we haven't seen in a while. We, I don't know, uh, but we'll see. So, yeah, I'm going to repeat everyone that I want to go over. In the non-title matches, The Fiend over John Cena, Undertaker over AJ Styles to continue 25-2. and two. Now we have the last man standing match between Edge versus Randy Orton. Wow, um, Edge coming back after nine years at the Royal Rumble was, was one of the best moments of 2020 for sure. Um, even though half of 2020 hasn't unfolded yet, but I can tell you it's going to be one of those moments that's replayed over and over again. Um, I personally love this feud between the two. Just another case of two old school guys putting on, like giving you a story that is real, is authentic, makes you care, comes from the heart, integrates real parts of their lives into it. Um, and it's not just the both them grabbing a microphone and throwing, you know, second grade insults at each other. Like it's it, it's it's real stuff. Um, in my ideal world, I would want Edge to walk away with the win for this match. But even if he doesn't, I would be OK as long as we go somewhere with this after Mania, which is kind of the difficult part, because with the circumstance that we're given right now, with everybody being quarantined and kind of on edge, huh, part of the pun, um, you know, uh, it re- like I really wonder what what's what's gonna happen. Are we gonna have the regular scheduled pay per views? Are we not gonna have those? What's gonna happen? Um, so it, on everybody's regular schedule, it, it, maybe this has a payoff, maybe it doesn't. But now we're kind of in this situation. So because maybe there might we might no longer be able to get a payoff. Um, you know, it, it might change plans. I'm okay with whoever wins. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this feud. Um, I suspect it to be brutal because it seems like in this feud, they really haven't been holding back with the concerto and edge using the RKO and, you know, the, you know, the language and, and all that, you know, it's, it's just, again, like I said before, a classic case of two old school wrestlers just giving you a feud that you can care about. So, that's that. Edge versus Randy Orton. This is one of my one of my most highly anticipated matches of the night. Uh, mostly because it's, it's not technically Edge's return match, but it's his return match because Royal Rumble doesn't really count. So... I'm really excited. I'm really interested in seeing how these two who have a long history, who have a genuine friendship, um, can put on this match. Um, seeing Edge, I think he said, I think he said nine years. Seeing Edge after nine years on the shelf 
come out of uh, retirement and and put on a full out match, I'm I'm stoked. Uh, if you don't have Edge win this match, though, um, there you have to move it forward into something else. And I think that having him win is the perfect uh, start to his uh, farewell tour, uh, however long he's going to be wrestling. I, I don't remember how long how long they said the deal was that he had, he had signed, but I want to say it was like a, I want to say it was a multi-year deal. I could be wrong though, but I thought I heard three. Uh, either way, uh, Edge with the win. Very excited about this match. Uh, the Rated R Superstar back again after a nine-year absence. Uh, Edge versus the Viper, the Apex Predator. Uh, third-generation superstar Randy Orton in a, uh, I believe it's a false Count Anywhere matchup. And the build-up for this has been good, you know, with Randy and Edge kind of like, oh, you know, rated RKO, maybe it comes back, maybe it doesn't, oh, we see what happened at uh, the Royal Rumble, but then again, the Royal Rumble always indicates that teams, you know, fall apart for a little bit just because they want to see who goes over, who, like, gets ahead, you know, as a singles competitor, but then teams reunite, but not this case. Um, I like the story. I've liked the story that's been going on in regards to these two. It's been, um, it's, it, it's still like a, a good story. Like you have Randy, you know, full blown heel performing the concerto on edge, you know, and also performing it on edge's best friend, uh, Matt Hardy. Um, uh, speaking of Matt Hardy, that'll be something for another episode one day. Also, you know, performing the RKO on Edge's wife, uh, Beth, Beth Phoenix, the Glamazon, and, you know, it, it, and then Edge getting his revenge, you know, everything's slowly adding up, and then the promos being cut by both men, true classic uh, superstars that have been around for almost like 20 years in the WWE, who still know how to cut a promo, who still know how to give us the best in regards to what we're expecting as fans. I can't wait for this match. I feel like Randy, even though this is, he just recently, I believe a few months back, signed a five year extension to be with the company. Uh, this is his way of like, oh, you know, I'm going to help continue putting over people. I think he still has a championship running him left, at least one more. We never, we'll never know. Hopefully, but I see Edge over Randy. Uh, due to the circumstances of what's going on, who knows how gruesome and how crazy this match can get. We'll see. Next, we have the match for the Intercontinental Championship. Sami Zayn walking in as champion versus Daniel Bryan. Um, I personally think this was just an excuse to get Daniel Bryan on the card, which I'm not going to argue against because he's one of your MVPs as far as I'm concerned. Um, Sami Zayn being champion means nothing, and that's not because he's a bad performer or because he's worthless as a wrestler. He's actually one of the best. I just feel like he's been shoehorned into a tag team with Cesaro and Shinsuke that is of no relevance, that doesn't make sense, is not going anywhere, will not go anywhere. Um, and all of a sudden he wins the Intercontinental Championship. Um, I can guarantee you they have zero plans for Sami Zayn holding on to that title. I would rather give it to Daniel Bryan, maybe kind of have like a teacher and pupil storyline with Drew Gulak where Drew goes, you know, I almost beat you last time. Uh, why don't we fight again? And why don't you put that Intercontinental Championship on the line? Maybe you can have that going. Split Sami Zayn up, you know, from Cesaro and Shinsuke. You know, the funny thing is I was talking with the commish recently. And I told him and I said, you know, if you took that group right now of Sami Zayn, Shinsuke and Cesaro, you split those guys up and you give them each a relevant storyline. Those three guys could become the pillars of SmackDown. Those three could make that show relevant if you just let them be them and let them be what they initially were in NXT. Um, 
they've been watered down, they've been downgraded, they've been jobbed out. Um, it's 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 really a shame. But I I'm looking for Daniel to take the title away from Sammy because I know they don't have any plans for it. I know with Daniel they might have a little bit more incentive to do stuff with it. But I'm just I'm hoping that Daniel wins. We drop this whole thing with Sammy being you know the liberator and the IC champion, um, and we just we kind of move on. Yes, 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 yes. We've got Daniel Bryan versus the uh, I forget what his nickname is right now. Uh, versus Sami Zayn uh, for the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, I. I don't know. I don't know if you put the belt on Brian. Uh, love Daniel Bryan. I just don't know if that's the right move. I I think Sammy and I I would imagine that you of all people, Shant, would agree with this assessment. I feel like Sammy's kind of gotten the short end of the stick time and time again. Solid performer, great entertainer. Wonderful on the mic, very very charismatic, makes you makes you lo- not currently makes you love him or makes you want to hate him, and uh, I just think that that he finally got his opportunity, he finally got his due diligence uh, as the mid card champion, and now we are toying with the concept of taking it off of him. I would rather see Sammy walk away with the win here and then have this turn into a multi-match feud um, at this point where maybe these two would probably be great to do one of those best of five or best of seven series things uh, just like back with uh, I can't remember who all got who who all was connected to them I want to say maybe one was Booker T and Stevie Richards but I could be wrong but I might want to see that again, but I think Zane. I'm going to go with Zane on this one. Then we have Sami Zayn going up against Daniel Bryan for the Intercontinental Championship. Um, I hope the shot hears this part of the recording that I'm doing, and he weighs in on Sami Zayn versus uh, Daniel Bryan. Especially the Sami Zayn part of him being an Intercontinental Champion. Um, I, I I don't know. He I, I want him to fill you in on Sami Zayn's run. He knows him a lot better than I do. I would like to see Sami still retain his Intercontinental Championship. It's only fair for the guy. I mean, Daniel O'Brien can put him over somehow. I just see Sammy retaining. That's just me. Hopefully we get that. I'm not too sure, but again, I'm not in control. I'm not in creative. I don't know what else I could say about that match. Next, we have um, a tag team match for the Raw Tag Team Championships, the Street Profits versus Austin Theory and Angel Garza. Gotta be completely honest. um, I don't care for this match. I don't think anybody does. Um, another case of a whole bunch of talent just kind of being lumped together. Um, yeah, I really can't say any more than that. Don't really care who wins. Don't care who loses. Um, actually, if I had to pick a, a team, I would have to go with Street Profits because Austin Theory and Angel Garza are not even really like we don't even know too much about these guys. Street Prof- Profits, we kind of we kind of know, like, okay, these guys, all right, like, they're a tag team, um, you know, they're talented, you know, they have some charisma, um, you know, so if we can just take them and just push them, you know, with other tag teams, um, that would be ideal, so that's pretty much my sentiments about that. Moving into the Raw Tag Team Championship, um... I, I think you have to have the Street Profits retain because it a Austin Theory and Angel Garza have the do these two have any chemistry? I haven't I haven't seen them perform together. I don't know if their characters have history, but 
This seems like a mishmash, and you just put them on the Street Profits. Let's see what those two can do. Forget these guys. Uh, then we have the Street Profits over Austin Theory and Angel Garza for the Raw Tag Team Championship belts. Now, it would have been originally Andrade and Garza versus the Profits, but uh, the reason why that's happening is because... Uh, your boy Andrade over there got injured in a rib injury. Hopefully he gets better. I still don't understand how he still has the United States Championship. It's been over 30 days and I haven't seen one title defense. Maybe there was one. Maybe I missed it. I don't know. But originally, originally we would have had, uh, again, for the umpteenth time, Maybe it would have been like a end all to end all with these two. Rey Mysterio versus Andrade for the U.S. Championship, and we're not getting that because one, Rey Mysterio has decided to uh, self quarantine himself in fear that he may be sick or showing symptoms of the virus. So it was going to be Garza now with uh, Andrade, but then Andrade got hurt in a rib injury. So now we're having Garza and Austin Theory go up against the Street Profits. Street Profits have been very entertaining in regards to the Raw uh, Championship. I like them as the Raw Tag Champs. Um, I like their run. I like the Raw Tag Division a little bit more. Hopefully we get a lot more out of them. But I see them retaining against this uh, made-up team now of Garza and Theory. Maybe Theory and Garza split off into their own rivalry. We'll see. Next, we have a five-way elimination match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. You have Bayley walking in as champion versus Lacey Evans versus Naomi versus Sasha Banks versus Tamina in a fatal five-way. Um, personally, I think that this match, um, I really only see Bayley walking out. Um, if not Bayley... Having Sasha Banks come very, very close, and then you kind of have Bailey kind of steal the victory, and maybe that kind of leads to Sasha building some resentment towards Bailey, and then you kind of reignite that feud between Bailey and Sasha, but this time around, you turn the volume all the way up. You don't just go halfway and then go, you know what? No, we, we were going to put you guys against each other. Now we're going to have you as a tag team. Um, I think with Bailey this time being the heel. Sasha maybe being somewhat of an anti-hero I would be able to buy into that feud um, because that Smackdown Women's Championship as of recent really hasn't had a notable feud it's just kind of been like okay Bailey kind of gets the win steals the win you know cheats get takes the easy way out cool um I don't mind the heel turn I just feel like again if we can have all of the talent with the cuffs off, everything would be a whole lot more intriguing and relevant and special. But I wouldn't mind seeing this like the the seeds being planted for a Sasha versus Bailey feud because Sasha came back, had an awesome match with Becky Lynch at Hell, Hell in a Cell, and then after that didn't really do anything of note. Um and so, which is why it's like, if we can get Bailey and Sasha to, to light it up again, you know, and, and give the, um, you know, a good feud for that title, I think we'll be on to something. Now we got the, the SmackDown fatal five-way elimination match for the women's championship. Um, something that I read suggests that, uh, Bailey may still walk out with the title. But this is going to turn Sasha, and we're going to start that feud back up again. And I hope to God that if they go that route, they commit. Because I know we've talked about this time and time again, where they pump the brakes and, and, and floor the gas, and it's just, it's a very uncomfortable ride every time they do it. So my money is going to be on Bailey to steal the win. Um... And I don't think Sasha is going to be the last woman. I think it'll probably come down to Bailey 
Sasha and Lacey. And we'll see it be kind of close. Lacey will catch Sasha with a women's right, bury her. No, not bury her, but put her put her down. And then we'll we'll have Bailey probably catch her with a surprise ba- uh, Bailey Bailey to belly, whatever whatever the hell the name is. Uh, so Bailey uh, is my pick. I think it's fatal five or six way of the limit, uh, women's match for the SmackDown Championship. Uh, these are the two potential women's champions I would like to see. Um, either Sasha Banks or Lacey Evans win. Lacey has improved a lot within the 2019 all the way to this moment now in 2020. Um, we haven't seen much of her, uh, but she's still in the mix very well with Be- with Bailey and and Sasha. Um, Maybe she's finally getting that main event status for the women's belt roster. You know, it'd be nice to see it. Uh, maybe it comes, like, as a double cross between Sasha and Bailey, where Sasha kind of, like, gets in Bailey's way and costs her to lose her belt to Lacey. Or maybe Sasha's the one who finally turns on Bailey and proves that we can finally get the, what do you call it? The rivalry we've been kind of wanting to see between those two, between Sasha Banks and Bailey. I don't know. I, I'm kind of tired of Bailey's heel run with the belt. Not because I don't like her, but I, I, I'm not bought into her being a heel at all. I, I'm not buying it. I'm sorry. Uh, but we'll see. But I, I have two options, either Sasha Banks or Lacey Evans. To me, it wouldn't matter. I just think... Bailey's run with the belt is done. So then we have the triple threat ladder match for the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. You have The Miz and Morrison going in as champion versus The New Day versus The Usos. Um, Personally, I feel like John Morrison's comeback was garbage. Um, You know, he comes back. Uh, he's a face. Then he quickly turns heel. He wins a match or two, appears at the Rumble, gets made a fool out of by Brock Lesnar, you know, um, within, you know, an instance, it felt like his return was irrelevant. Um, I think that in this match, it would probably be the most reasonable to have Miz and Morrison win. Uh, you can kind of develop them as a tag team who just barely, you know, scrapes by and gets through. Because I feel like, and that's the thing too, I don't want New Day and Usos to reignite the, their feud again because we've seen that so many times over the last two or three years. We need other tag teams for these guys to feud with. You have Heavy Machinery, you have The Revival, you have The Street Profits, you know. Um like you need you need to mix things up so that it doesn't get stale or you need to mix things in a way where feuds become sporadic and they don't become frequent. So those are my sentiments about that. Um I thought what I read and I this isn't reflecting it, but I thought what I had read is that this ladder match for the SmackDown Tag Team Championship was going to be a triple threat with just three guys. Um, I would have to revise review that, but at the time of this recording, I I thought it was going to be just three guys because I heard The Miz was sick. I'm going to speak as though that's true, and we'll go from there. I think that you have, if that's the case, probably... Probably Morrison, Kofi, and I don't, and Uso, and you have the three of them in this ladder match, and I think that Morrison has to somehow still pick up the win. I don't think that this is the right time to take the belts off of Miz and Morrison. I think there's they they still got some gas in the tank, and I de- I definitely don't think that the Usos or the New Day need them right now. Give him a full program, and then we'll see. So my money is going to be on Miz and Morrison. Uh, then we have Miz and Morrison defending their SmackDown Tag Team belts against the Usos and the New Day. Uh, 
I am going to say Miz and Morrison go over in this match. The tag division in SmackDown to me has kind of been like lackluster to me. You know, maybe this is on the pre-show. I still think Miz and Morrison, you know, they're going to win it. They're going to retain. And we're going to see them continue with their streak with the belts. Again, the SmackDown men's tag division to me has been kind of very lackluster. I Maybe they proved me wrong in the match. A tag team match for the Raw Women's Tag Team Championships. You have the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kairi Sane going in as champions versus Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Personally, I feel like Kabuki Warriors are, you know, is not what everybody wanted it to be or what it should have been. Um, you know, I personally feel like Asuka needs to go back to a singles role. Um, I again, they have dropped the ball with Asuka's career. You know, I felt like if she lost to Charlotte, and then you kind of build up the story for it to you know, go for one year and then come back to last year's WrestleMania where you have Asuka versus Charlotte Part 2. Asuka gets her revenge and kind of reclaims herself as the the Empress of Tomorrow. Um, that would have been tremendous. However, she's kind of just been getting, you know, jobbed out. Um, the mystique of Asuka, I think, is gone. Like, you know, they brought the, the whole green mist aspect of it which is fine but then it kind of become their it, it became their their go-to like oh we need something interesting in the match we'll just we'll have the green mist spot um i personally hope that nikki and alexa win um those two as a tag team is entertaining like they're very fun to watch and you can tell that they're having fun that there's some chemistry there i wouldn't mind if it's close to SummerSlam or a survivor series you have like Alexa and Nikki kind of like slowly disintegrate and then maybe Alexa betrays Nikki and that sort of sets off Nikki as like, you know, the twisted sister gimmick. Um, but for the time being, I would take the titles off of Kabuki Warriors because it really doesn't serve a purpose. It's not going anywhere. It hasn't been going anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. And that's pretty much it. You know... I'm sure this is one of the most uh, most anticipated matches for you since we're talking about the Kabuki Warriors versus Alexa and Nikki Cross. Um, I, I'm, sh I'm sure that your your pick here is, is Alexa and Nikki because, well, you have a fondness for both of them. I, uh, I, I appreciate all of the women in this match. I, I do believe that we will probably see Bliss and Cross walk away with the titles at this point because I don't think that the Kabuki Warriors have been um, as effective lately. And I, uh, in my opinion, Alexa and Nikki uh, deserve their turn. They've, they've waited, they've been there, and it's, it's about time. So Alexa and Nikki Cross, tag team champions. The... Women's Tag Team Championship, which is all across the board, I guess, on Raw, SmackDown, NXT, whatever brand, you know, it's Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross versus the Kabuki Warriors. This match, to me, I think I see Bliss and Cross regaining the tag belts, you know, continuing this push in the women's division as the best tag team. Don't get me wrong. The very first winners of those tag belts, Banks and Bailey, it worked out pretty well. Then it was, I believe, uh, the Iconics, and then they took over as the longest reigning tag champions. Then it was Bliss and Cross, and then it was the Kabuki Warriors. And I don't know what happened then if it went back to Bliss and Cross, and then it went back to the Kabuki Warriors. Either way, we're getting this tag match because Alexa Bliss feels she has a point to prove in regards to these belts. Now, in my opinion, I think they deserve the tag belts, uh, Bliss and Cross. They, they've proven not only to be an entertaining team, but a dominant team. Like, you know, I see that they should be the faces of these belts. I would like to see Asuka and Kyrie break off as a team, you know, develop more stronger heel tactics 
against each other. Like, we haven't had a rivalry between heels in a while. It's always babyface heel, babyface heel, or anti-hero heel, whatever, you know? I want to see two heels go at it. I want to see who's the better of the two. Um, Get the women's roster as far as SmackDown or Raw. Like, some more, like, you know, competitiveness going. Um, Because once Sasha, not Sasha, I'm sorry. Once Becky, I think, wins and retains her belt, I mean, who else do you have to throw at her at this point? What, we're going to see Ronda come back? Or we're going to see who else is left on the roster? Who knows? Or maybe we'll get a shakeup, you know, or another draft. I don't know what's going on. But I would like to think I get to see some more competitiveness, and it could start with the Kabuki Warriors separating, eliminating that title of Kabuki Warriors and being the individual stars that they were before, you know, maybe giving Kyrie a push, um, barring injury or anything like that. Uh, we'll see. So then we have the match for the Raw Women's Championship. Becky Lynch going in as champion versus Shayna Baszler. Again, another feud that I think has been one of the more interesting feuds that we have on the card. Um, The way that Shayna has been booked has been perfect. I wouldn't change anything. Um, I would book Becky Lynch as like barely surviving than definitively winning. Um... You know, I think that maybe this feud could spark up the four versus four that we've all been waiting and hoping for. Um, just because now it seems like Ronda and Shayna, like if 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 Becky wins on Sunday, Shayna and Ra and R- Ronda sort of have an incentive to be like, you know what, we tried going up against Becky, we came up short. Okay, now we we gotta just go all out and we gotta get our revenge. You sort of have you know like a two on one attack. And then you can integrate other portions of, you know, the four horsewomen kind of, you know, putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Um, but for this match, um, again, I think that if Becky wins, it needs to be like, oh, she survived. She didn't win. She survived. Um, Shayna should be dominant in this match like she always was in all her NXT TakeOver matches. Um, you know, I think these two will have an excellent match. I wouldn't have Shayna tap out. I would have it be like a roll up or a or a, a quick you know pinfall victory. Um, I wouldn't mind if this goes on if this feud goes on because it's fresh, it's new, it hasn't been seen before, um, and you can certainly go places with it if they're allowed to go places with it. Because like I said, with the circumstance of what's been going on, like that's a little bit tough right now. But if the plan is to take these two and to elevate them. I think that you would have to go past WrestleMania as opposed to just stopping it and going, okay, Becky or Shayna wins, end of story. Um, So I'm going to go with Becky on this one. I think that once again, bringing it full circle, like we are back on the stage where she won the title and hasn't lost it since. You build up her title reign, you build up, you know, her momentum. And then when the time comes, when when a different competitor comes down and, you know, it's time for Becky to, you know, let someone else have that title, you know, I think it'll mean a whole lot more. So that's me. Uh, we got Becky Lynch, Shayna Baszler, Raw Women's Championship. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about this match based on the buildup. Um, I have praised Shayna endlessly. Uh, I love Becky. It's been weird. It's been a weird ride. And I'm going to, I'm going to put some of the blame of that on the circumstances, but it's still a weird, it's still been a weird ride. I wouldn't be opposed to this turning into a thing where we get the, we get the return of Rhonda and that she kind of spices up the, 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 the pot. But my anticipation here is that it's going to be a really, really, really close match. I don't know. I don't know if Shayna walks out with the belt, though. So I'm I'm having a difficult time predicting. I will say Shayna wins. That's my guess. 
or that that would be my booking. I don't know that Vince would pull the trigger because from what I've heard, he's not he's not that impressed with her. But you'll never know unless you cut her cut her cut her loose. On the flip side, if you have Becky walk out again with the belt, then you get to build to a bigger program. But yeah, I'll, I'll make this bold prediction: Shayna wins. Due to Ronda interference. And we got Becky Lynch defending her Raw Women's Championship against Shayna Baszler. Uh, Shayna, honestly, like, if we had a contract signing at Elimination Chamber, a stare down, the promos that we've been getting, it would make more sense. I see where it's going between Becky and Shayna. You know, maybe there's going to be more, maybe there's not. Uh, maybe we'll get the build-up of build-ups of the four versus the four. We don't know yet. I don't know yet. I don't even, I kind of want Becky to still win, but find a way to put Shayna over. Like, even if, like, the belt doesn't change, you still find a way to put your opponent over. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe we get a full heel turn for Becky as a champion, you know? And we get some kind of push for Shayna as a face. We don't know. Or maybe as an anti-hero. Either way, I think this is going to be a good match. I'm ready for whatever comes with it. And then we have, you know, a match for the NXT Women's Championship. Rhea Ripley going in as champion versus Charlotte Flair. Rhea Ripley has been your pillar for the women's division in general. I'm talking Raw, SmackDown, NXT, NXT UK, everything. Um, she's been very popular, I think, among the fans. She's been very relatable. Um, she's been kind of the one person who keeps on popping up on the TV screen and, you know, you know, gets the reaction she gets. Um, Charlotte, you know, I'll, I'm, I'm going to say this right now. Rhea Ripley better win at WrestleMania. And if she doesn't, if Charlotte winds up winning the match, I am officially done with Charlotte until further notice. Um, I just feel like Charlotte once again has become that one person, that one athlete where once again, every single time when someone is on good momentum, leave it to Charlotte. She comes in and boom, you know, destroys it. Um, Hearing those, uh, I don't know if it was rumors or if it's confirmed, but hearing the fact that she is potentially unhappy with her, you know, with how things have been going. I mean, at this point, you're a 10-time champion. You've main evented WrestleMania. You've had a WrestleMania match each and every year. You're almost always guaranteed to have a spot at a Survivor Series or a SummerSlam. You know, I don't get how you could be unhappy. So I'm just going to leave it at that I am going with Rhea. She better win, and if she doesn't, I'm done with I'm done with Charlotte Flair. This is uh, absolutely an opportunity for the WWE to solidify Rhea. I understand that Charlotte won the Rumble. I still disagree with that decision, um, but I think that you need to make it a, a hotly contested match with a, a couple of false finishes. But Rhea needs to pick up the win. Um, I would love to have. I would love to have Rhea make her tap, but odds are that we're really going to go with uh, an impact finisher. So she'll probably hit the rip tide for the win. With Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair, aka Blonde Cena, aka. Um, I have been put over so much, a.k.a. I bury the women's division, yada, 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 whatever. Obviously, you see that I'm pulling for Rhea Ripley to retain her NXT championship belt, and hopefully she gets a push from Charlotte. I mean, I don't see this making sense that Charlotte wins the NXT championship and what she goes on NXT, she goes backwards. I, I don't know. That makes no sense to me, guys. I, my pick is Rhea Ripley over Charlotte. I don't want to get into it as much about this match. Um, And now we come down to the final two matches. 
So we originally had for the Universal Championship, Bull Goldberg going in as champion versus Roman Reigns. Um, now I'm hearing rumblings that Braun Strowman is going to be the one to take, you know, uh, Roman's place. I think that if if there was ever a time to pull the trigger on Braun Strowman, we need to do that now. The last two or three years at WrestleMania, Braun has walked in with not really much of of a feud or an angle. You know, two years ago, it was, oh, he's teaming up with Nicholas. Last year, it was, oh, he's going to dominate those two guys from Saturday Night Live. It's like, this is this is your monster. This is your monster of this generation. You don't do that to him. And for him to have his title opportunities taken away, postponed, rescheduled, like, you know, until further notice type of thing um, is really a crime. So I think that these two can have a great, brutal, hard-hitting, you know, match. But eventually, Braun Strowman, you know, needs to walk away as champion and needs to finally cement himself as the giant of this generation. So, you have Goldberg, of all people, at whatever the hell pay-per-view it was, Super Showdown or whatever, come in and spear the Fiend, 16 times, 5 times, 6 times, whatever. Hit a sloppy jackhammer and walk away with uh, yet another world title reign. God bless Bill. I don't have anything against Bill. I still think this was a dumb decision. It made sense when you went Spear versus Spear with Goldberg and Roman. And then now you've got coronavirus, where immunocompromised individuals are at even higher risk, one of whom is Roman Reigns. So Roman has stepped out of the match, and we've got his replacement to what I heard is to be Braun Strowman. I don't think that uh, Goldberg can jackhammer Braun. I don't. After what we've seen with Undertaker and uh, the Fiend, I don't think he can get that big moment. So I don't think he needs to win this match. I think that. If that were the case, this would be an entirely different conversation. However, given everything that's transpired, Braun Strowman should finally get his crowning moment uh, after, a, after a, again, a very cl- a close match. Because you don't want to have Bill bury uh, Bray and then have Braun uh, make him look weak. So... Let Goldberg get a decent amount of offense in, but let Braun uh, show what he can do. Because we've seen in the past, Braun's a big man. He's fast. He's strong. He's agile. Showcase what he can do, and let's slap that belt on that man. The SmackDown Universal Championship belt, the blue belt, as it's now portrayed as, with uh, Goldberg versus Braun Strowman. Originally set to be Roman Reigns versus Goldberg, but due to health concerns and because obviously he's been dealing with his own personal health concerns, he's trying to put what's important to him over anything. Roman decided that he's not going to be participating in this match or the event. Um, They replaced Roman Reigns with Braun Strowman. Uh, So we're going to get Braun versus Goldberg. Interesting match. Um, as far as before I talk about it, I I understand. I am okay with the decision that Roman chose. I mean, health and family above all, before anything else, especially in this modern day and era. If it was still going down between these two, I think I would be okay if Roman had won the belt. The belt he technically never lost, as he has said. Uh, Maybe this is Braun's moment. This, this, This shimmer of light has come. You know, he's not the Intercontinental Champion. Um, But maybe this is finally Braun's time. Yeah, it's not like we're getting it where it's well-earned. It's kind of being handed to him. But circumstances are circumstances in the world. And I would like to think... 
maybe this is truly like Braun's calling. This is his time now to like, all right, I'm going to give the opportunity. You know, maybe they finally see and believe that I can carry the torch with this belt. Maybe. But I do see Braun winning this match over Goldberg. I don't know what would have been the silver lining if we kept Goldberg going, you know, with the Universal Championship. I still don't see it, especially since he won it off The Fiend. I, I, just, I don't know, guys. And then we come down to the final match of the night. You have a match for the WWE Championship. Brock Lesnar going in as champion versus Drew McIntyre. Um, again, my sentiments has been said about this. I am pulling for Drew. I think, he, you know, I know that he deserves it. Um, I've followed along with him since, you know, the broken dream days, you know, since the chosen one days. Um, you know, um, Drew is very believable as a champion. I just hope that after he's champion, he doesn't become this white meat baby face because that's not who Drew is. Um, you know, you need to book him as sort of an, uh, a, 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 a baby face, but with an anti-hero edge to his character. Um, I'm expecting a good match, a hard hitting match. Um, probably going to be a bit of a finisher fest. Maybe I'm suspecting two F5s, maybe three, but, um, I know Brock recently has been doing the favors and has been doing what is right when it's right. Even though a lot of people want to call him out on him and go, no, he doesn't ever do that. Yes, he does. You just, you have to look out for it. Um, but no, I'm expecting a good contest. Most likely going to be the main event. Um, hoping that Drew wins. Would have preferred to be in front of a live crowd. Uh, but it is what it is at this point. So, yeah. We got the main event, at least in my opinion. Brock Lesnar. Versus Drew McIntyre. A series of misfortunes that should have been a moment of glory. Drew McIntyre, after years and years and years of misfires and failures, leaving the company, coming back, having rebranded himself, I liked Drew back in the day. He was not what you would have thought would have been Vince's um, ideal. But apparently Vince was actually behind this guy. And then he had a decent run in the mid card. He never really, never really got to the world title picture. I think he might've had one, one, uh, one match, but I, I don't remember the whole, the whole plot. And then he got repackaged. They just repackaged him, turned him into a jobber with the uh, three MB. And, uh, I'm sure he had plenty of fun. Him, Jinder, and uh, Heath looked like they were having a blast. And ultimately, Drew left. Drew was out of the company. And we've seen the accounts where he talks about how uh, it was a wake-up call. And I'm glad that that happened because then he got himself fit. He's a big, he's a big dude, and he is jacked. And I am proud of him, and I've never met this man. But he turned it around, he came back, he turned into this imposing, strong, powerful figure, intensity, for days, and now he's here. He has made it. They finally pulled the trigger to give him this uh, shot at a WrestleMania moment that should have been the WrestleMania moment. And, you know, a global pandemic. <laughs> decided that that wasn't meant to be. So, to whatever degree they can put him over, they need to put him over. I don't want them to go, well, shit, we're just shooting in the Performance Center, Brock can pick up the win, and then we'll give the belt to Drew uh, at Backlash. It's not the same thing. And I understand this isn't going to have the same visual dynamic of a normal WrestleMania, but let Drew McIntyre have that moment. Have him, give him that coronation, because the man deserves it, and it's his time. Uh, we have Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE uh, Championship. Um, 
this to this match to me, it feels it doesn't feel as impactful as it should be. Obviously, with everything that we got going on in the world right now, it's heartbreaking that it has to go down this way. That it's in a closed, more controlled environment. Drew does, has done a lot to get up to the main event status that he's achieved. He's done a lot in the last few years. He's been, you know, with the company and been wrestling with WWE for like. 10 11 years now and this is I know the circumstances of the world are not what we all want obviously we don't we all want the safety of not just performers but of the fans of everyone in the world and it just seems unfair you know I mean Brock is more than willing to put Drew over uh, at least I think he is you know I don't see Brock retaining his gold um, maybe something will change. We don't know, but I would like Drew McIntyre to win the belt off Brock Lesnar. Let him be a dominant force to be reckoned with in the WWE for a while. Give him a really good, if not better, title run than last year's uh, WWE Championship title run with Kofi Kingston. Now, not to say that Kofi wasn't a good champion, but it wasn't really the the championship run that we could have gotten we could have gotten a lot more out of it but again i'm not in creative or in control of creative i would like to be but we'll figure how that goes so there you are guys you know uh each and every one of us separately kind of gave our opinions and predictions about what we think is going to happen this saturday and sunday at wrestlemania be sure to tune in and catch it on the network for just only 9.99 Thank you so much for joining us. Everybody stay safe out there, and we'll see you all next time.